Hello, hello, sports marketeers. Looks like the NFL might play. Uh, and I hope so, but if not, we'll do something else. This is uh, chapter one from the Mullen text. I already posted one chapter one that I created earlier. Uh, this is another text, but same type stuff. Uh, Let's do that there for gravy. So this is the Mullen uh, chapter one, the special nature of sport marketing. And I thought I would start off with a video and a Florida State Seminole t-shirt from my basement office. That is a big loudspeaker right there. If we ever need to broadcast warnings on campus, I could bring in the equipment. Okay. So with that said, uh, let's turn off the video of me and move on to the matter at hand, which is chapter one, uh, the special nature of sports marketing. A lot of these slides say sport marketing. Sometimes I change them to smart marketing, but they go by, they prefer to use sport marketing. So I will probably always say sports because I think that's better. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what they do. So what's different? We're going to talk about marketing and what's different about sports, the marketing of sports, or, uh, as opposed to, you know, the marketing of, uh, you know, a hamburger or a Milwaukee drill, right? So these just list some key ingredients for a branding effort, uh, stickiness of an idea, how far does the brand reach, do different segments of the population uh, relate to the brand in a personal way, uh, is the media interested in it, is there any media around to be interested in it, uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute, uh, can you monetize it, uh, can we, just, can we come up with a figure that of what something's worth uh, when you think of a sports product, which is a uh, falls in the service category, which if y'all remember anything about services from principles of marketing, I'm mean, going to hope you do. Uh, we're going to talk about a few of them in a minute. That you'll maybe you'll jog your memory, may not, but we shall see. Um, so North American professional sports leagues, a global phenomenon. Uh, as I speak, we're going to speak about normal times, not pandemic times, but, uh, you know, the NBA is hugely popular in Asia, especially in China, which is the reason there was a dust up recently about, uh, the NBA players, not, not commenting about, not commenting about some things that were going on in China with respect to them, uh, you know, locking a large group of people and work camps because of a lot of revenue that comes from over there, especially buying jerseys and things. Uh, and building sport participation has been a key tool in marketing sports brands on the international stage. No doubt, you know, the NFL plays a couple of games. They started playing games abroad a few years back. Uh, then this year, uh, they were scheduled to play a couple in London, one in Mexico City. Uh, it's very popular, and of course, the more people you get to participate in your sport, the more popular it becomes. Think of soccer in the United States uh, 20 years ago versus today, as an example. So, uh, people have been known to say and write that sports are maybe recession proof. Well, we'll certainly find that out. Uh, in the year 2020, but it's nothing's recession proof, hardly. Nothing is that inelastic, except maybe a life saving drug. Uh, and, you know, downturns in the economy have had effects on sports and sports brands, right? So this slide mentions the 90s and the building of stadiums during the 90s going down. Major League Baseball, the most popular sport in the United States, uh, drops 
occurred. Of course, now they don't have any. And uh, people reducing, corporations reducing spending on sports marketing, marketing through sports uh, during times of recessions. Because you know, if you're Home Depot, you're going to cut, cut back wherever you can. You know, use the most effective advertising you can. But there's no need to advertise to people that can't buy. So uh, they're not, sports aren't recession proof. They can't just keep doing the same old thing and figure that people will, people still may pack the stadium. But as we're going to talk about in a minute, that's not where the major money comes from, whether it be college football or the NFL. Um, and again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, you know, the marketplace is competitive. The competition for everybody's dollar uh, is stiff. You know, that is from your own personal micro example. You know, you start a month with X amount of money, and the competition for those dollars is widespread from, you know, just everything you can think of that goes for your money. You know, you pay your bills, and, then, you know, do I eat out? Do I eat at home? What kind of gift do I get my mother? Do I give her something handmade because I'm all broke? <clears throat> do I buy cheaper clothes? You know, all those things. And in sports, it's no different. Uh, you know, leisure spending on spectator sports has decreased in the U.S. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm going to post a reading that will explain that in more uh, detail. Uh, a great, great article by Nicole Auerbach about college football attendance. I'll leave you this thought to, to ponder. Uh, leaving out this upcoming season, forget that, but from 2019, say for the last five years, do you think uh, college football attendance has gone up, has gone down, or stayed about the same? All right, you have an answer in your mind? Hold on to that. See if the reading agrees with you. And one of the right, but a very competitive, one of the things that are going to be mentioned in this class and in other readings is the expansion of sports entertainment and participation options creates a greater marketplace competition. Right? There's now sports gambling in Mississippi at the casinos. Some people have opted to, rather than go to a University of Southern Miss football game against whoever, Tulsa, it might be just as fun to go to the casino, watch it on the big screen, and place bets on other games. That may be a substitute for you. Maybe watching it on a big screen television at your home without having to fight for parking that you don't control, food prices that you don't control, and get a babysitter and all that. Maybe we'd just rather watch it. Um, and with all the sports channels and all the teams that are, I mean, all the games that are broadcast, you can you can see anything that you're into. Uh, you can get a subscription to watch World Cricket, where matches last up to four and five days if you want to. And I'm guilty that I watched a match over a three-day period of time. Not constantly, but I would go back to it every now and then just to see if they were still alive uh but uh the marketplace is competitive for everybody right it's tough to can you maintain your market share all the time i don't that's the cincinnati bengals in the nfl have they maintained their market share throughout the history of that franchise no is the answer and the popularity of some sports think that MMA and all that slapping and kicking and all that foolishness uh, is plateauing and declining, especially when they started putting those guys up against real boxers and they just got killed. Uh, and they realized, oh, that's just a lot of slapping and kicking and stuff. Uh, but competition, of course, media challenges, how people consume sports. Uh, I quit going to... Uh, Sanford Stadium in Georgia, uh, at Georgia, I should say, um, after one particularly 
hot game where I was in the sun most of the time. It was 95 degrees. I got sunburnt. Uh, you couldn't buy an adult beverage. Uh, people were everywhere in my grill and, you know, you couldn't get the replay and everything. From then on, I still went to Athens, but I would uh, watch it at the tailgate. A buddy of mine had an RV, and sometimes he would get to the game in person. Sometimes he wouldn't. I just watched the stuff, the big screen TV, satellites, and it was great. And then that night, we'd go out, and it was great. Uh, newspapers, there aren't as many as there used to be. Newspapers used to be uh, a prime purchase for sports fans. People that monitor stats and box scores and all that stuff. Now you can get that right on your phone. And there aren't as many beat writers uh, assigned to teams anymore. Uh, but there are organizations that do nothing but sports, like The Athletic, which is a great uh, publication, if you're not a subscriber. Uh, and you have to adapt to new means of reaching consumers because people are getting their information in more and more silos so it's hard uh, you can't count on everybody knowing when season tickets go on sale you know for the falcons you have to reach them uh where they are and social media has really sliced that up into a bunch of different groups and some of them very thin uh high school sports have been affected uh you can also, I will also add into that, this slide doesn't add into that, but uh, college level sports uh, may perhaps minus the top two or three uh, programs in the country in basketball and football, that those are really the two big uh, money generating sports and only, but only at schools that have big operations behind them and they have a lot of success. So, uh, you know, in Georgia this year, higher education was cut 10% across the board, and they're anticipating cutting it again. And K through 12, the, the budget proposals that are out for this year they are going to discuss have a billion-dollar cut in them. And that's billion with a B. So uh, that's been tough. And uh, are people participating in high school sports like they used to? Everybody's read articles about the reduction of uh, in middle school and high school boys playing football. And their parents encouraging them at younger ages to play less contact sports, right? Uh, also, there's other things for them to do. You know, there's that, there are other outlets. You know, they can game, they can fish, they can swim, they can run, they can play soccer and lacrosse, and uh, they can be on a college gaming team college fishing team so that puts stress on sports as well so this is just a definitional slide here all activities are designed to meet the wants and needs of sports consumers through an exchange process and we all know from marketing what the exchange process is in its simplest terms i give two dollars and something to a chick-fil-a drive through and they give me a chicken biscuit i can also give my time northwest georgia Humane Society, and they can give me a warm feeling in my heart that I helped a forlorn pup. That's an exchange. Uh, but marketing occurs whether exchange or is it not. You can try like the devil to create an exchange, and ultimately the consumer doesn't purchase. No exchange takes place. Marketing expenses took place. And uh, the next bullet. Sports consumers are involved in sports through watching, right? Reading about it. Maybe the sports of the, I mean, history of the sports are once real common or real popular this year, the Negro Leagues and uh, baseball. Uh, I've read a bunch about that this year. It's very interesting. Collecting memorabilia. They may not, that may be their main thing. And of course, playing. But most sports, most people who spend money on sports aren't the players, uh, but uh, but other otherwise. But, you know, if you play golf, you might be more interested in watching golf. Or if you play tennis, you might be more interested in watching tennis. I'm not interested in watching either of those, but you get the drift. So you market products to the consumer, or you can use sports to market through. 
And if you think about it for a second, you know that's the way it works, right? So we can market the New Orleans Saints who will win the Super Bowl this year, no doubt about it, if they play. Uh, the greatest team in football. But we can get the Saints to people to buy tickets, uh, attend, buy jerseys, Saints be that, that way. Or if we're Geico, we can use the Saints to market through. They play in the Mercedes-Benz Dome, as do the Falcons. They both play in the Mercedes-Benz Dome. Mercedes paid a lot of money to both clubs for those domes to be called that. Same, the Braves play in Truist Park, which is the worst name ever with a terrible logo. But they're using that in the market through sports. So people attach the Braves to the bank. And they go, well, you know what? I might want to bank there. I'm a Braves fan. So we can market to the consumer or we can use sports to market through. So marketing myopia from principles of marketing you should have learned this and if you took me you did i'm sure about if you took anybody you did that's doing that's becoming if you become myopic then you lose your peripheral vision you become you get tunnel vision you're just focused on one thing and you're not uh worried about you know how's our market share how's our attendance uh, we just, we know that if we do this, we'll be fine. Uh, Power five college football has suffered from that uh, over the last uh, decade or five years at least. And uh, they realize it and they're going to work on that. Uh, that is, again, I'm going to post a reading of that. So if you're a winner, that doesn't absolve everything else. If the stadium's horrible, the service is horrible, the food's expensive and horrible, parking is not existent and horrible, there's no way to get in or out. You might not you might not do as well, even if your team wins the World Series every year. So if you have a myopic vision of your product or your team, and you're ignorant of what's going on inside and outside the stadium to your people's wallets. That would be a classic example of marketing myopia or myopic view of what you're doing. So, again, these things uh, all, this is just, these bullet points all add up to helping to create a myopic view from management. Uh, that you've got a winner and you got a stadium people want to see and it really doesn't matter what you do. Uh, they're going to come, right? We're recession proof. That's not the case. So you want to try to never fall into that category, no matter what business you're in. So I thought I deleted this slide, but apparently I didn't. When I download this slide, uh, when I download the slide deck onto uh, D2L, this is a clickable link that uh, I thought was just fantastic last year when the Falcons announced their schedule via this link, which was Game of Thrones themed, and uh, especially since they even took note of the Saints being on the receiving end of a very, very bad call. Even they know it. Uh, it was in there. Uh, it's in this thing. You, in this, you can click on it and uh, see from the deck, which you should, because it's fantastic. Fantastic example of marketing Falcons tickets for upcoming season. Uh, so, why is sports marketing unique from uh, other marketing, right? Well, first we've got the product. We're going to talk about product, the marketplace, 
financing and promotion. So first we've got the product and that's just the definition of a product uh, at the top, but you know, any bundle or combination of qualities, processes and capabilities that a buyer expects. So uh, sports product is a little bit different. In fact, it usually involves some type of playful competition, uh, typically in some kind of game. There's some rules that you follow if it's in tennis or lacrosse or whatever it is. If you actually play, there's some sort of physical prowess or training or practice that you have to do if you're good at it. Uh, it involves special facilities most of the time, even at the bare minimum. It involves a you know, basketball hoop to be able to shoot hoops and you got to have a ball and something to dribble it on. I grew up on a gravel street. We learned how to do that. But So you have to learn about the product, and it's not the same, right, as uh, selling a hamburger or a, a uh, cordless drill, right? It's uh, the fundamental project uh, thing I want to say here is this unique, and that's the reason that it's worthy of study. So... Let's say that you participate in uh, golf. Let's say you golf. Uh, you know, you might do it for the social sociability part. You might do it because you're trying to get better, or maybe you have gotten better. Uh, you may do it just to drink beer and goof around with your friends. Or for some reason, you think it's good for your health. I guess maybe you walked around and pumped iron or something. But that's the core benefits that uh, most people are uh, looking for in there um, when you think about the sports product. But it's influenced by, of course, equipment, because you got to have some equipment. Facilities are any good. And then the specific sport form, I've chosen golf. So, and this concentric circle we go with golf and then outside of this we've got the classic marketing mix plus one so they've got product place price promotion uh, and we know that this is sometimes a D for distribution but product place price promotion then they've added you know public relations in here so it's a bundle uh, it's not just you know a staple for a stapler it's a bundle of things that you have to think about all aspects and you don't control some of them as a marketer, right? Uh, so an intangible, ephemeral, experiential, and subjective nature. That is sim very similar to how you define a service. And services marketing, wouldn't you say? Uh, strong personal and emotional identification. Right. Even the tangible, I'm going to go back to the intangibility of sports, even a tangible piece of a sport like a baseball uh, at a baseball game would seem normal. Me running around in my yard with a baseball bat, same, very same one would be different. Right. I might be a nut or I might be getting robbed or I might have just had it with the woodchucks. And, you know, I just, you know, snapped. Uh, a personal emotional identification. Sports elicits a lot of passion and commitment, right? You could be bitten by the, a bug to play volleyball or golf or baseball. And you remember when, when that happened. Uh, and that's very unique. Most people don't feel the same way about, you know, a belt pair of shoes that they do in Wisconsin about the Green Bay Packers, right? So that's helpful from a marketing perspective, but it can also be a little bit problematic. And there's simultaneous production and consumption, just like at Waffle House. Uh, you know, you can't save up, uh, you know, the Carolina Panthers can't save up a football game because it's pouring down rain. They say, well, you've got the ticket, so 
you just go home and enjoy that game and or try again next week. You can't because it happens. It's peril. Uh, they're pre-sold, right? So, and fans, when you're at a game, you participate, right? If you've ever been to a uh, uh, an MLS game in Atlanta, you see they're chanting, yell, and wave, and scream, and stand, and do various things. You know, you contribute in person to the experience, which is uh, unique. I don't contribute to any experience, you know, at McDonald's. I just tell them what I want and they hand it to me. Right. Uh, and I get some hard goods and part of And then, of course, they have the service component that somebody made it and gave it to me. So we stay with the uniqueness. Uh, it's, it depends on social facilitation. If I want to play tennis, I've got to have one person at least to play with. Right. So generally sports require interaction with somebody else. Uh, if I'm going to play some football, I'm going to need some guys to, you know, we're going to have to make up two teams. So social facilitation is a, is a part of this product. Inconsistency and unpredictability. We don't control the weather unless you're in a dome. Weather's a, a factor. Uh, rain or cold, right? Uh, rivalries. You know, you've got to market a game of the Georgia Bulldogs versus, uh, you know, Northeast Iowa State or the Bulldogs versus the Florida Gators. You don't control that as a marketer. You just need to get people in the park. And somebody's got to sell a contract to try to get that on television so they can sell ads for it. Is the baseball game going to be good? The Braves have one pitcher. If he's pitching, okay. If he's not pitching, you better wait about four days till he pitches again because there's going to be some dogs flying up uh, after that. <clears throat> so, uh, and the, the core product is effectively beyond the marker's control. You can't say, yeah, buy a ticket. We're going to win 10 games. You're not in control. You're not in control of that. Uh so that's odd. You know, if we're making Apple computers, you could, they, you know exactly what you're, what they're selling. They know what they're selling. And if there's a problem, they tell somebody you need to fix it, and they can make some promises about it. But uh, with sports, not so much. It's out of your control. So uh, the sport marketplace or the sports market, the Falcons compete against the Saints in a rivalry. But they're both members of the NFC, and they're both members of the National Football League. In sports, typically, uh, teams compete, but they also cooperate because they have to. Uh, you don't see that much cooperation between Home Depot and Lowe's. They just compete. They don't get together and go, well, where do you think we should open stores? Well, you open two over there, and I think we'll open three over here. In sports, that's not the case. Uh, demand tends to push. If you're having a terrible season, ticket sales are down, and so is television viewership. Uh, if you're doing great, uh, it does does great. A lot of people are watching, uh, and uh, they, you know, they're happy about it. Uh, when they open the season, Braves open the season at home, you get a big crowd. If they lose and lose the next 20, uh, they won't get a big crowd. And sports has an almost and pervade all elements of life, right? Think about uh, soccer that's been popular, or football with a U. Uh, it's been popular all around the world, but not so popular in the U.S. Now it's more popular, right? Even here, hockey has been the mainstay in Canada and in Eastern Europe. You know, for I don't know how long, multiple decades. Now there, you know, are hockey teams in Phoenix, Arizona, and down in Florida. And basketball is the same way. That's a quintessentially American sport invented here. The rules were derived here or written down, but the rest of it is taken to basketball in a big way. So it moves up. Uh, 
all around and you know you can mention just about any sport in any part of the world whether they played or not they're familiar with it most people uh we say we're going to be selling widgets and they cost us 50 cents or let's say they cost a dollar to make all in materials labor and everything and so we won't sell them for a dollar 50 it's pretty easy calculation pricing a sport product unit let's say a ticket to a game is not right because it's very subjective uh, you might say well if we sell them for $25 I think uh, we could make a uh, we can make a profit at that but you know what if you're selling them for a thousand dollars for a hot 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 game that consumers are demanding uh, that requires you know the marketer's sense of what market will bear so uh, the finance decisions with respect to that are eminently more difficult than if you work in a factory and you have costing and you know exactly what it costs you to make the television uh, or whatever and what you need to sell it for uh, the price is invariably quite small in comparison to total cost paid by the consumer what does that mean well going to a Braves game is not just the cost of the ticket it's the cost of getting down there it's the cost of parking if you drive it's the cost of food and beverage maybe you had to get a babysitter that's a cost and most of those things are not controlled right by the marketing team for the Atlanta Braves especially if you're parking off-site my babysitter all that so they may think that well with the cost to go to a game is the tickets this much okay let's add in everything else now it's what does it cost for a family of three to go dollars right uh, you have to add in all of those things and be cognizant of all the extra costs and as sports marketers, they know that indirect revenues are very important because they're the lion's share of the revenues that a uh, team gets. Ticket sales, you know, for Clemson or University of Alabama for college football, that's just a small fraction. It's the TV contract is where the money is. You know, uh, over 80% of the revenue they generate are from television and then marketing rights people who pay them we want to, we want to make tons of shirts okay it's X amount per shirt you make or shirt you sell <laughs> or a grocery chain wants to you know use Clemson logos and things and uh, those are indirect revenues uh, and those are frequently if not all the time greater than direct operating revenues uh, if you notice, well, you notice NBA now has sp allowed sponsorship uh, patches on the jerseys, which they didn't used to do. But NASCAR covers up every square inch with a uh, sponsor, except for Ricky Bobby when he couldn't get any sponsors. It was just him or me. And if you think that movie's hilarious, we cannot be friends. Uh, widespread media exposure is a double edged sword. It's great if everything's going well. It's bad when somebody acts up uh, or something bad happens. The team does something bad. Uh, so, you know, any press is good press? Maybe so. Unless you've been cheating like the Houston Astros and then everybody covers it again. Everybody hates you. And often uh, the sponsors, they em emphasize celebrities. So, you know, nobody may know it they may not know another player on the tampa bay buccaneers uh, in 2020 right other than the quarterback because he left uh, the patriots with a handful of rings and now he's down in tampa so that's fine and, and well think of tiger woods it was all fine and well until they did something that uh that the sponsors didn't want to be associated with it's a problem how do you work around that we're going to talk about that in the class and later on in the class about uh, what a lot of people a lot of sponsors do to uh to not have that program 
And if you get, you know, a lot of free exposure and then you all of a sudden you don't, well, oftentimes you become lazy and you say, well, we always get that kind of exposure. Well, not now. That's back when you were winning and good and people loved you. And you had this particular, you know, Tom Brady was on your team. So uh, it's a problem when you just a lot of your efforts on one person, a coach or a player, and then something bad happens or they embarrass you. But anyway, we will come back to that. So anyway, that is uh, that is chapter one for sports marketing. Mullen, Hardy, and Sutton, fourth edition. I will see you on the internet.